my name is Catherine Margaret Highfield. I won Info World Top on my own and I also have started to set up Pendle Media Academy locally and today I've decided that I'm going to update a video I did about two years ago. So the video was first put out because I was asked by a friend who the granddaughter had been found out to be Asperger's and they didn't like the response that this girl got. So she asked me to do a quick video on what it's like for me. So I did a quick video and now I feel like it's time to update it. And also because that was two years ago and I, everyone changes and I didn't cover everything in that video. So this video will be linked in with my book that I wrote in 2006 called My Life Living with Dyslexia because not just Asperger's I've got dyslexia. I am blind in my in one eye and I also normally suffer from a stammer but I have singing lessons for that so um, thankfully it's not affecting me at the moment as it would normally do so I've been quite lucky I can seem to get over it so hopefully I'll be fine through this. I do have notes so I'm not doing this without any notes and I'm relying on the Asperger's Behaviour Analyst um, program guide which tells the 10 characteristics of a person with Asperger's syndrome. So what is Asperger's? Asperger's is a behavioural issue, as some people say. That means that we can't communicate with people. We don't like getting to know people, apparently. Um, we don't like physical contact. Um, we aren't academic. Um, and we have bad communication skills. And some people say that we need psychological help as well in the process of overcoming Asperger's, which I don't think you overcome Asperger's, I think you just learn to live with it, which I have done and I'm perfectly fine. Um, so what type of jobs could someone with Asperger's go into? Well, I'm, I'm a writer, I'm also um, an actor, and soon I'll be a producer as well because I'll be producing my own stuff hopefully next year, it should have been in June but since Covid-19 it'll hopefully be next year and um, also I enjoy doing my singing you know I've and uh, I've worked on loads of sets with other actors over 6,000 people in most days so I don't think it's affected me as it would have done if I'd have known I had Asperger's. You see, I didn't know until I was probably about 29, I found out. But I worked it out um, and my friend didn't think it was important to tell me because she knew I would learn to deal with my problems, which I really appreciate it for because as I hear from some people they're told and then they're told you're never going to do anything you might as well give up now which I really really angers me and hopefully with this video I can show you that isn't right anyway the second um, point of Asperger's is speech differences now as I said before 
I had, a, well, I have a summer. Um, I didn't speak until the age of uh, five. Um, it got so bad that my per my parents bought me a doll called Cricket, and she, um, I learnt to speak with her. She had errors, and it made me overcome my problems. But I still didn't really talk. I was very, very quiet. Um, I did see my performing, but I was not confident, and I've never looked back at any of my old work from when I was in school because it, it, it's traumatising for me to watch it. Um, but I did do school plays, I did um, uh, all the Easter festivities and everything, and I even did gospel reading one year, but I've never ever looked back, never looked at the stuff because my speech is so much better now that I can't I just can't look back at it. Um, the only problem I have is reading people's body language. I don't like reading people's body language. I get very anxious because I can't tell if they're being genuine or if they're if they're just pretending to be your friend or if they are your friend. Um, if they're if they're excited or if they're not interested and they're just lying to you. I just don't understand all all these um, concepts and I don't like emotions. I really struggle with emotions. Um, I don't even do... If I'm an actor, in, in my acting job I can do it. I can be physical, contact, I can do anything whilst on camera as a different character. But as me, it is not not a good place. Um, so I always have to pretend to be someone else to be able to do any of those things. Otherwise, it's never going to happen. Um, the one thing that I do find that is not right, because I've never had this problem, is the development of harmful psychological problems. I've never had an issue with psychological issues. The only time I had a problem was, which is obvious, was when I was in college and um, a lot of things were going on and um, I had to speak to someone to get through those issues. But that was not because of the Asperger's, it was because something was going on that was out of my control. So I've never had psychological issues and I don't know anyone that I know with Asperger's who has, so I won't, I won't put that as a situation. Um, with orientation and uh, directions, I'm not good with left and right, um, so I, I wouldn't... <laughs> Luckily I don't drive, but that's because of my eye condition, but I don't always remember which is the right side and which is the left. And um, yeah, I, I don't do left and right, you know. So um, that I can't do maps. So if someone asks me which turn do I take, I always have to look at a map that's drawn instead of like one of these directional things. It just will, will never help me. Um, now this is a good one, persistence. Now I've had dyslexia since I was, I can remember, I've always known I've had it, I knew I was different. I never ever thought, I can't do this, I'm never going to be able to do this. If I thought that, I, I wouldn't be here now. Um, I ne when Until the age of 16, I couldn't even write one sentence. I couldn't even spell my name. I had to have a pencil case with a cardboard in it saying Catherine Margaret Highfield written out in um, bold print. I had to get permission to take it into my exam room. 
because they thought I was going to cheat with a piece of paper with my name on it. Um, and then um, I would sit in the headmistress's office for hours trying to get one sentence out for my essays during my GCSE year. And then I started doing the website in 1997 just as I was finishing school and after that never went back I started writing Sir Weatherby um, the same year and now it's going to be made into a series at some point uh, in, with our independent projects so I've now got about five projects on the go I'm writing my second book to my Katie's In With The Sexier series and I've also got another project which is looking quite interesting but I'm not going to say much now because it's still a work in progress um, I've also do, I also love doing music videos things like that and um, it's who I got to know that helped me a lot I think as well because I, I've i always been very lucky I've never been not on a set until obviously this year I was on the last time I was on set was in 2019 um, in January and that was after a year out because I hadn't been well at all I had to have uh, infusions, iron infusions and multiple blood tests and but now I'm back to normality now I guess um, I think people have to be persistent with the issues that I've had because it's one thing after the other but I've never thought I'm not going to do what I've always wanted to do which was the acting, the writing and the producing because I always knew I could do it I just had to to believe in myself that I could do it <laughs> that's the difference um, the other thing is is that it's who you've got around you um, and the support that is there and sometimes you don't know it's there until it's not around anymore and that is difficult um, I've lost a few of those already this year but it's the way life goes so not socially driven so obviously I don't go out much I I go for walks, that's good for your psyche, but I don't go out socialising a lot. I go for meals, if I'm invited to a meal I'll go to a meal, um, but I'm not one of those ones that goes out partying every night. I don't like it, I don't think I'll ever like it. I do enjoy rap parties because you've worked really hard and you've got to party after that. Um, but I don't go out if I don't know somebody. I, I don't enjoy being in situations where no one is there that I know. Um, I never really got invited. I got invited to parties but I didn't know them really well. So I never enjoyed school because of that. Because of the party situation. Um, I, I don't really talk about my socialising actually because it's a sensitive point so I'll skip to high integrity high integrity so yeah I don't get involved in drama I really hate drama in any situation, melodrama, I don't like it, I, I actually suffer from anxiety because I don't like it, <laughs> so um, it, 
I, I'm very loyal to my friends and I don't like when they're wrong but you will never find me in the middle of a scene like bombarding anybody I don't do it I don't like the whole the whole concept now again in the acting world <laughs> if someone says to me I've got to start having a disagreement with someone that's different I can do it then but in the real world no no thank you I don't even like um, conflicts um, like going to the bank I don't like anything like that I really don't like it um, as for routine as I said before <coughs> I don't like change and a lot has happened this year that I really have struggled with and that was with um, the lockdown obviously because we like to be out we don't like to be in um, I was in lockdown completely for four months because of uh, my dad because keeping him safe and uh, then when lockdown lessened I was able to go out more but then just after the lockdown lessened we lost my grandmother suddenly so I was up in Scotland for a while um, helping out with organising that and then and then recently just a week ago we lost my uncle so it's been a really rough time, <laughs> you know, I don't really, I'm not really spoken about it really, so. Um, they, it's, it's hard to know what continuity does for Asperger's. We like it that nothing changes, but some things are out of people's control and it does change. And then there's um, the fact we can't film <laughs> around here, you know. We can't, we've not been able to start our filming. My gran missed out on seeing me do what I really enjoy doing because of COVID, you know. So it, it, it's very frustrating. Then we've got, um, I started my singing lessons back up and uh, did some recording. And then now we're doing Christmas carols, which I can't believe. I don't know where this year has gone. So, anyway, routine for us Asperger's people is important. Obviously, as I said, we can't control everything. And that includes people dying. Even if we wanted to, we can't control it. Um, I... The one thing that I find difficult with people is when they say that you don't show any emotion and you obviously didn't care, which is not true. We do care, we just don't know how to show it. We, we don't like the emotion of crying. It causes anxiety and I don't do it often because of that. But apart from that, we do understand that it is upsetting. If someone needs a hug, we do give a hug. It doesn't feel the same for us, but we know it feels good for the other person. And um, we can still have relationships. It's just not as easy for us. It's like a minefield, but we can have relationships. Um, anyway, that's the ten points that wanted to cover. As for my stammer, in, um, I've never listened back to myself when I was five. I can't, I've never been able to do it. But I do have videos in my room of um, the plays that I was in. And I've kept those. I've never watched them, but I keep them as a reminder of where I was at the time and one day maybe I'll feel confident enough to to listen to it back but at the moment I can't and it might be a very long time before I do do that um,
I do do a lot of church readings now. I did the last one a week or so ago and it just turned out to be the same reading that was at my grandmother's funeral. And ironically it was the same day that the church is closed again for Covid. So maybe I'll be back doing a reading in a month's time, in a few weeks anyway. Um, I don't know what else. Anyway, as I was saying before, I am writing the second book of my Life Living with Dyslexia. The first book is on Amazon, but I'm re I'm rejigging um, that because <coughs> it has my pseudonym on which I don't use anymore. But this is the one, obviously this is my copy. There we go. Uh, and it's got Cairn Fraser on, but I, it won't have that on it, the new batch. It, I've got some batch left with it on, but it's not, it's not, um, it's, it's not uh, the new book. Um, I'm getting some copy by someone else this time. Um, and I'm going to put my own name on. This was my pseudonym. But um, when Google took over YouTube, my pseudonym went away. And it, everyone knows who I am now, so it's no secret. Um, I will be um, designing a new cover for the next book. Um, I've not decided what I'm having on it yet, but I'll be using the same beginning and end, but switched around. So I'm only having to do the middle of the book, so it's to be a lot easier this time. Funny enough, I finished writing the first book when I was 23, and I'm 36 now. So th this book will be interesting because it's everything that I've done from 23 up until now but I'm going to finish it hopefully next year when we've started filming because that's how I want to end it so okay, that's that but I'll add the link once I've sorted this out I'll add the link to my Amazon area for you to order a copy or get your Kindle version. That's still on I think, the Kindle version. I took the book off because I've had to do some changes. But the Kindle one is still on there. I'm sure it is. So if anyone has any questions um, I will be sharing this on Twitter so you'll be able to treat me, Twitter. Um, I'm under my own name on Twitter actually um, with the website link right underneath it called infoworldhub.com and I am going to be adding a section on the website about living with dyslexia in my Katie's Living section um, there's some other sections on the site that might be interesting for people but that's one area um, and also I support Star Trek um, so there's sci-fi um, there's products um, there's everything you want to find out and um, I will start reviewing on stuff once uh, I've got everything sorted um, I do apologise for the hair. I didn't get an appointment before our recent lockdown. It was cancelled. Um, it does not normally look like this. <laughs> it, um, but it was to for a test to see if it would stay in. It's obviously not worked the way that we planned for it to stay in. But that is what life is like for an actor who is trying to find a white hair colour for their character for in front of the camera. <laughs> so, um, yeah, if anyone's got any questions, I will respond to anybody. I don't want any negative uh, feedback because it's very hard to do a video like this. And um, 
I don't always use co eye contact to a camera because I've, <laughs> I'm so used to being on set. They say don't look at the, the camera. So <laughs> it's not because I don't want to look at you. It's just I'm not used to doing it this way. Um, and probably we can do some some more videos like this in the future if you if you enjoyed this one. Um, I could do about the process of setting up uh, Pendle Media um, or updates on how the books are going um, and how tedious a website checklist can be. So <laughs> I've got a few things going on the go and um, this may not be uploaded on the night that I filmed it. I'm filming this on um, Wednesday night, I believe. It may go up on Friday because of just, you know, technicalities. If it will upload, it's be up, but I've had issues with um, the internet here. We live in the countryside and it doesn't always work, you know, so. Anyway, I hope everyone's coping well with COVID-19. Look after yourselves and um, take care of people who probably can't get out, you know, and um, be kind to each other, you know. It's, um, not everyone's kind to people, but let's all try and be kind to people. It's, uh, it's nice, a uh, world of a kind. And to all my acting friends that are working, good, <laughs> good, you know, it's, it's tedious time this, not being able to get out on set. <laughs> But we, us in the UK are missing it and um, I've had a few acting friends who have messaged me saying come on we want to get back on set but obviously I am safety conscious and I am not going to put them in that situation and they can just wait until I'm ready <laughs> to to risk it. Hopefully when these um, injections are ready then we can start thinking about it. But until then, I don't think so. But that's that's everything, and I shall see you all again soon. I will be doing more videos because of the last two months. I've just not felt up to it. But I think I think I'll be able to do more now that um that this one's out of the way. This one was a big one. <laughs> and uh, I never discuss myself, but because I promised somebody, and I always keep my promises, I said I would do it, and I've done it, and um, I shall see you all again soon. And maybe one day do a live. I don't know. I've never done a live before, but we could. I could do. And uh, you could ask me questions there and uh, ask what it's like being a writer, actor and producer starting out, you know, so. Anyway, if you have Netflix, Redcon 1 is the film that I am in um, with Mark Strange and, and, and Chi Kwan Chung, director, and... Um, what else have I been in recently? Um, I can't think. I've done a few things, but that that's the biggest one. Um, it's, I think it's one of the top films at the moment on Netflix, um, from what I heard. So, um, it's a very good film. Uh, and I think people will enjoy it at the moment. So. Um, if you see it on Netflix, you'll know to watch it now. And uh, anyway, I better get back to doing my work because this is what I'm doing at the moment. I've got. Okay, let's turn this over. So this is my site, my computer that isn't even logged into anything yet. My notes, my, okay, my notes for tonight. My books nothing in it yet but that's 
Oh. And, and then my checklist. So, you know, and my script is just below here. <clears throat> it's the scripts that I completed the other night in my RT file. That's what I call it. So. Anyway, so that's what so that's what I'm doing. Um, so that's what I'm doing at the moment. And obviously I listened to the telly. So I don't know what I'm listening to tonight. I normally currently I've been listening to Star Trek Discovery and um, The Crown. Um if I'm feeling a bit low, um, um, well, what's it called? Vicar of Dibley. Um, I haven't watched any films recently, so I don't think I will do until I've finished um, what I've got to do. But, yeah, so that's what I normally do, is have something playing in the background to keep me sane, and, uh, and then we've got the animals who are crazy. And Miss Pretty. <laughs> there she is. Hey, Miss Pretty, look at the camera. See that? Who is that? That's you, isn't it? Why is it doing that? There you go. That's Miss Pretty. See, there she is. And then we've got my grand's dog. And she's there. Hello. Hey, Pop, come over here. There she is. So, these are my buddies at night, aren't you? Right. Anyway, I better go. And um, whoever watches to the end, um, thanks for watching. Um, I hope people watch to the end because it's very important that people understand what people like me have to go through. And there's a lot of us out there. So, I look forward to seeing everybody soon online, and uh, you never know, you know, one day you might be out of book signing and it'll be me, and you just don't know. Anyway, so, bye for now. Bye, bye.